Have you ever been driving or walking, minding your business, and all of a sudden you hear whoop whoop? Police officer stops you, questions you, and then proceeds to pat you down. Well, I have. As someone who has, I believe that this stop and frisk policy should be abolished. However, however before I make my argument for the abolish, uh, abolishment of this process and my resolution or solution to this problem, I want to clearly explain to you what the stop and frisk process is about. According to current fact, current events, a police officer has the right to stop anyone and, and frisk them, whomever that individual may be, at any point. At any, at any point. However, you might say that this is unconstitutional, or your Fourth Amendment right, which is, which prohibit, which prohibits any unreasonable, unreasonable seizure or searches is violated. But the, but the Supreme, Supreme Court disagrees and continues to allow this injustice to continue. And the effects on innocent people continues to be disheartening. As stated by the New York City Civil Liberties, in the year 2002, over 80,000 innocent New Yorkers were stopped by police officers. This this amount is 87% of the total amount, total amount of individuals that has been stopped. Similarly, in 2004, over 270,000 270, innocent individuals have been stopped by police officers. 53% of these individuals were black, 31% were Latinos, and only white, only 10% were whites. Importantly to be noted is that of these total individuals that has been stopped, 52% were between the ages of 14 and 24. This clearly shows that this is an attack on young minorities. According to Amsterdam News, in 2011, which is last year, over 600,000 innocent, let me rephrase this, innocent New Yorkers have been stopped by police officers. 55% were blacks, 34% were Latinos, and only 9% were whites. This is racial profiling at, at its best and at work, and this is with the support of the United States Constitution. From a mathematical standpoint, this, these numbers or these stoppage would, would look to you as, as, as this. Every 10 New Yorkers that have been stopped, one is guilty. According to the, um, to the Huffington Post, over 3.5 million innocent New Yorkers have been stopped and street interrogated by the cops. However, I do contend that crimes need to be stopped, right? And an, and an alternative for fighting this is what is called focus deterrence. Developed by criminologist David M. Kennedy, this is the opposite of stop and frisk. This According to the New York Times, this strategy or this process begins with the, pro with, with the recognition that a handful of young people are responsible for most, not all, of the crimes in the neighborhood. This practice tar targets the worst culprits and then, um, have, and then have intensive investigation and criminal prosecutions of these individuals. Instead of harassing young, instead of harassing innocent people, this process actually goes after the real bad guys. 
the New York Times stated that a, that the New York Times stated that in, in during the 1990s, in, um, homicide in Boston dropped drastically due to this focus deterrence. Mr. King himself, Kennedy himself, also ad successfully adapted this um, strategy to combat drug, to, to combat violent drug um, markets in North Carolina. This system basically builds, this system builds, builds community trust in police officers. And, it, and, what it, and as a result, what it does, it makes, or, or makes, the, um, it makes the police gain legit, legitimacy in these communities. However, as I contended earlier, that crimes, crime needs addressing, crime and violence needs addressing, and it needs to be stopped. And the stop and freeze program is doing much more harm than it is doing good for individuals in New York State and in general in the in the state in the U.S. The cause of this practice, the cause of this practice, not only harm individuals, their privacy, being frowned upon if someone sees you being arrested. But it also can no longer be tolerated. Thanks.